Hello y'all, I am Adam Sandoval and today we are going to talk about the five worst things that you should know about if you're thinking about getting a schoolie. Number one, the gearing of most of these buses. Gearing is a big deal on these things. Typically when you get a school bus like this, uh, especially the older models, like this one's a 97, you are gonna be buying a vehicle that tops out at about 65 miles an hour. Not exactly gonna make good time across the country with that kind of speed. And the problem is that gearing. See, most of these are geared to run children in and out of school zones in the city, up and down streets. They're not made to run 80 miles an hour across the interstate, coast to coast. So one thing you can do to increase that speed is bigger tires. You see here, I've gone with some Alco rims and some super single tires. They are a 455-55R 22.5. And they are super singles, like off of a semi truck. The added height over the factory tires essentially changes your gear ratio you lose a little bit of torque, but you gain some top end. I've got this bus doing about 80 miles an hour after that fix. But if you don't do that investment, the top end in these things is probably one of the biggest drawbacks I can see to traveling the country. Number two, the insulation. The insulation in these things is not good, especially if you're like me and choose to keep all these windows. They are very difficult to keep cool in the summer and hot in the winter. I run mine with one rooftop AC to keep it cool in the summer. It does an okay job unless it gets way too hot. Then you find yourself still struggling. Mine also comes with heat built into it which does an okay job, but sometimes I have to use extra heaters once you get in those sub-freezing temperatures. Let's take a look. So right now, there's really no insulation underneath this rubber hardwood floor. And up in here in the ceiling, you've got probably about a half inch to an inch of insulation in there. Of course, on the walls, very little. And with all the windows, you are definitely going to leak some hot and cold air. Now, I have seen people take and strip all this metal off, strip the floors off, spray foam underneath the floors, spray foam in the walls, close off some windows, put cupboards there or something like that spray from the ceiling and then rebuild it all. And that surely is going to help your heat and air struggle. But that's a lot of work and expense in itself. So as they come, I would say this insulation is subpar and going to be one of your biggest struggles if you're traveling to climates that aren't ideal weather. Number three, the ride quality. That's right, the ride is a negative because it is rough. These things, again, built for running kids through the city streets. The suspension is made for carrying thousands of pounds of kids, and you can tell when you're riding in it. This thing rides like a log truck. There's no doubt about it. It is very, very aggressive because the suspension is so stiff. Now, there are some things you can do to help that out, like those super single tires I have in the back also have a taller sidewall. That taller sidewall with a little bit lower pressure gives you a little bit more cushion and really does make a difference on the ride. Although you are gonna ride rougher than some of the newer rigs, like say that one. Regardless, you are going to have a rougher ride in this rig than you will in one, say, like that guy back there. But in other ways, this rig has advantages over that rig. If you have not yet seen my five things to love about a schoolie, click the link right up here and go check it out. Number four, licensing and insurance. Licensing and tagging is a tough one when it comes to these school buses. They are officially from the factory commercial vehicles used for commercial type work. If you wanna get it insured, you must get it licensed as an RV. Once you get it licensed as an RV, then you can get it insured. You can see right here, I have got mine licensed as a motor home. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. In order to do that, you're gonna to have to do some things. You're gonna to have to take the stop sign off the side. You're gonna to have to show them the inside and prove that you've made modifications to make it an RV. Do you have running water? Do you have a bed? Do you have electricity? You have to prove to them that you have done modifications to this to turn it into a motor home before they will change the title from a commercial bus to an RV. It's not easy to do. It's a struggle, it's gonna take patience, research, and a lot of hard work. But once you get it done, then you can start the struggle of finding insurance. I have been able to do both for this. Many people have on their school bus conversions. You're gonna to have to have patience to make it through that struggle. And number five, the campground accessibility 
or acceptance. That is right, campgrounds is a big deal. We are at the K River Campground here in Moyers, Oklahoma, and this is my campground. And although we love schoolies and love to have schoolies here, not all campgrounds are created equally. You certainly are going to run into campgrounds that do not allow school buses to camp in them. They consider them an eyesore. I think they're super cool. I think the repurposing factor's nice. Especially if it's in good condition like my Igor here, I don't see the problem but you will find a lot of campgrounds around the country will not let you in with a schoolie. So when you're traveling, that is something you're gonna wanna check out. Does the campground that I'm headed to allow school buses in? Sometimes if you got a nice bus, just sending them a picture ahead of time helps relieve some of their concerns, but it can be a struggle. One nice thing is with these school buses, if you set them up right, like mine, I got solar panels up there, generator down there. You can boondock. You can really go, especially out west, find places to park off the road, and you can just camp for free. And they can keep their high society campgrounds to themselves. And that is it for my top five, we'll say, negatives about owning or having or converting a schoolie. If you have not yet, please click that subscribe button down below. And if I forgot something that you think is a big negative or a watch out that people should know about, let us know in the comments below. Until the next video, remember, dream until your dreams come true. <laughs>